unless you got us. Yeah, I do. Uh, Tony, I, there in the eighth inning with um, with Hunley and and with Greer, there was that were they crossed up there on that wild pitch, or did that one just get away a little bit? Yeah, no, there was some sort of miscommunication, and and uh, you know it, it was silence uh, between me and a couple of the guys that were in our coaches' locker room, but the the guys were also finishing up with their position meetings, so. Um, at that point, you know, we, we mic'd into them to get on the same page. And then I had kind of moved on right or wrong to the next inning offensively when we came in, hoping to score in the eighth inning. Um, so some sort of miscommunication led to that deal right there. Right, we'll go to Ben and then Mike. Yeah, Tony, just what'd you see from Chad? Uh, didn't seem like he had his, his best stuff today. No, I think both pitchers were pretty amped up, um, based off the circumstances and, that that's something you got to deal with, uh, you know, whether you're used to it or not. I mean, it, it's the SEC, it's Friday night, uh, and then you sprinkle in the type of environment that we had here. Uh, there's going to be a lot of adrenaline, a lot of emotions running high. And I think, you know, it's kind of running out of his delivery here and there and, and probably a byproduct of, of what I was talking about there. Um, at the same time, he's facing good hitters. The, the ball was jumping in the park tonight. So, um, you know, I think guys at the plate recognize that. And also if they got any sort of barrel to the thing, you were going to have some damage, but you know, it's, it's fair to say he didn't pitch his best. Um, but, but who's to say, I mean, he got us deeper into the game, uh, or won the starter battle type of deal. Um, but it, it just wasn't, uh, you know, his best performance. Tony, I obviously jumped out to that early lead, but did anything change approach wise or just some bad luck, good defense from Arkansas the rest of the way, or, or what did you see from your guys offensively kind of through the final eight innings? No, I mean, I think if I'm right, the next two innings lead off guy on again, some good swings, um, you know, didn't happen to score. And then when Caden Monk came in the game, um, he was really good. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you can say he was on or whatever, maybe we helped him, uh, but we saw a different look, took us a little while to adjust to it. Part of the reason was uh, really good stuff. Uh, and then, you know, we faced one of the best closers in college baseball and I think put together really, really strong at bats. But one thing that happened, um, you, you know, as the night went on was, you know, things got a little tighter. Uh, so again, those emotions and the tension is running high. I didn't really see anyone, you know, go completely outside of themselves, but when it gets down to the nitty gritty like that, it's it's not as easy to push one across and they just happen to push one more than we did. We'll go to Ryan and then Troy. How big was it from a momentum standpoint what Sean was able to do when he came in in the fifth inning and then just what, what did you see from him after that? That was enormous. I mean, if we would have won the game, it would have been, you know, not solely because you got to play nine innings and and we just got done telling our guys, you know, it all counts. Um, but, but that would have been the game in a nutshell right there. So it was huge what he did for us, um, you know, and it, it really kind of impacts the whole series that that inning could have got, you know, much hairier for us. And it could have changed the way they use their bullpen. Um, it it could have changed the mindset and competitiveness of our guys. Um, so it had tremendous value regardless of the loss. So, you know, it seems like forever ago, but just how, big was that first thing nobody's been able to kind of hit Wicklander like that and I guess did you just get a sense that the guys were kind of amped up to to play number one and kind of came out firing they they were ready they they really were and um you know one side of you can say it doesn't mean a hill of beans now because you didn't get the result you want but um they, they should take confidence in it uh, you know different nights but we talked about other big series we've had where there's a lot of hype leading up to it and maybe we didn't handle it quite as well on practice day and on game day. I thought the training going into the game was phenomenal. The environment and the mentality going into the game was phenomenal. And, and I think that's why they got to a guy that's really, really good. Uh, maybe if he was to do an interview tonight, he'd say he didn't have his best stuff. Um, but, but I think he ran into a group that was ready and our guys need to take confidence in that. Um, you can look at what we talked about with one of the first questions, but well, we didn't get as much after that, but, like you said, there's also a lot of guys who didn't get anything off that guy. All right. So we'll do two more. We'll go to Matt Jones, and then we'll finish up with Mike. Hey, Tony. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Kevin Copps, no one has has made him work like that this year. What were your hitters doing that, that made him kind of labor through those three innings? 
Yeah, I mean, they were just competitive. I, I'd love to tell you we had some sort of top secret meeting or something like that. We, like any pitcher that comes in, we have a couple things we, we kind of throw at them, um, you know, as far as approach goes, but it wasn't anything outside of the norm uh, as, it, as it relates to Kevin. And, um, you know, I, I agree with you and I appreciate the compliment. Again, we didn't get what we wanted at the end there, partly because they played great defense and he made a couple big pitches, um, but some incredible at bats by our guys. And um, like, like I said, every inning impacts the series. And, uh, you know, what our guys were, were able to do was impressive. Uh, but he's also impressive. And, you know, tonight was one of those deals where it was going to be an inch one way or the other. Um, and afford, unfortunately for us, they accumulated a, a few more inches than we did. And then I thought two of the big at-bats of the game was when Lipschitz uh, struck out at the end of a 15-pitch at-bat and then Spence struck out at the end of the eighth. What did you see in those two? And, and, and how did you feel like that? impacted the game yeah I mean Luke's was was amazing <laughs> I mean I don't know how else to describe it um if I'm not mistaken he got into an 0-2 hole or at least it was 1-2 and for him to battle back the way he did just to about pitch seven or eight and then to keep going and keep going it says a lot about how good he is with two strikes how competitive he is and then yeah it's it certainly again kind of you know impacts the weekend this is a three-round bout and it certainly had something to do with that. And then, you know, Liam, as always, you get a great at bat out of him. And he just pulled off that cutter a little bit, cutter, slider, whichever they prefer to call it. But you just pulled off that thing just a hair. And uh, I've seen a lot of guys on video pull off it by about five feet is what it looks like at times. So, you know, Liam, as always, was locked in. Um, their guy just happened to make a pitch, you know, when he needed to in that situation. Thank you. you bet. Tony, what's Pav's status? Uh, I mean, and what did you see from him in that that inning he got defensively? You know, I, I think there was maybe a miscommunication on one pitch or or whatever happened, the ball went to the screen. It might have just been because um, Sean yanked it across or something. I, I didn't have a good view. Um, but I think he looked settled. And maybe it was good for him to get back there and do that. I definitely was glad he took a full BP for the first time today. Um, so, you know, throw Wednesday, light BP Thursday – some game action today. Uh, we'll see how he feels tomorrow because it's it's a big time kind of soreness thing. Uh, where we're at on the scale with that kind of determines where he's at as, as far as play mode. But he wants to go, and we're playing the long game. I know, uh, you know, these two players next to me might punch me in the face, but, you know, for saying that because they want to win tonight, but so do we. Um, so we, we went with the guy that's been playing, and I think it, it worked out at least in a good way for Pav that he was able to get some action and, and we'll be able to kind of measure that a little bit better tomorrow. Thanks, Coach. Thank you all. Thank you.